just starting here now, uh, laying in this undercoat of paint uh, using dioxazine purple and ultramarine blue and some uh, burnt sienna. Now as I go into the um, sunlit portion, I've just uh, mixed in a, a gold color which I've accomplished by using titanium white, cad orange, and cad yellow. And I'm trying to paint this, so this is all coming in acrylic right now. I'm trying to paint it fairly fast so that I can get some good blending time with it while the paint uh, remains wet, uh, but that doesn't remain wet very long. So now as you can see, as I get close to the temple and to the stairs on the ruin, um, I'm keeping a gap there because that's all in oil paint and I can't allow the acrylic to be overlapping or touching the oil. So I'm gonna bring in real quickly uh, with some black gesso. I'm blocking in kind of the the main foreground here, which we'll work on um, in the final video segment, but not in this particular one. Um, but wanted to get the, uh, the silhouette just kind of painted in really quickly. And um, since this isn't touching any any oil paint regions of the painting, I can do all this in acrylic and just work it in really quickly. Um, taking a little time with a smaller round brush to uh, bring on some individual leafing, um, kind of hit that circumference sort of around the main block in of the uh, of the tree and the uh, vines here. Um, and again, I did this all in black gesso. So I I uh, find that the gessos are um, they cover better. They have a deeper pigment than uh, the standard um, acrylic paints. So when I'm covering large surface areas like this, I like to, especially if it's going to be something really dark in the foreground, then I'll I'll do it with gesso. Now this is where I'm coming back with oil paint now because as I said, I left that gap, um, didn't want to touch the acrylic into the oil because they don't bind together very well. Um, so the rule of thumb, uh, for those of you who don't, don't know, when you're painting in oils and acrylics together as a mixed medium, um, you always want to lay acrylic paint down first. The oil will bind on top of the acrylic, but the reverse is not true. I cannot lay down oil paint and then overlay that with acrylic paint because um, it won't bind. It may, may work uh, temporarily, but uh, over time and as that uh, acrylic, uh, the water evaporates, um, what you'll find is it'll begin to um, flake off. And so um, that's just something to keep in mind. So I uh, brought in the oil now and um, what I'll be doing is I'm gonna kind of jump between oils and acrylics for a little bit here as I'm laying down the underpainting portion of all of this. Um, but what I'm working in right now is I'm just using my oil palette and bringing in some of the basic uh, shapes. Uh, we have some, some rubble uh, from the ruins that uh, have kind of just broken off from the structure, fallen to the ground, um, kind of littered everywhere. So just gonna bring in that kind of basic um, kind of effect here. And uh, then I'm just kind of laying in some basic grasses um, keeping in mind this is all in the shadow region. So I'm beginning to actually glaze on uh, the stippling effect here as well. I've mixed together sort of a, a blue-gray color and um, kind of stippling that into that region as well. And also stippling on uh, a little bit of dark um, texture to the rubble uh, that I can then um, just add some highlights too. So I'm just using liquid as my medium and then um, just making kind of a basic uh, dark bluish gray tone um, that I can sort of cover throughout this shadowy area here. 
So I've mixed together a lighter version of that gold um, color that um, want to just have a, kind of a little path, sort of an old kind of rocky sort of flagstones um, that are kind of strewn here. Uh, as I work closer, I'm bringing, getting those a little broader and a little wider. Um, and then as I go into the shadow region, I've kind of mixed this uh, a little bit more purple and orange into that gold mixture, but I'll change that here a little bit later. I want to make it a little bluer. Um, and then I can go back and just kind of add a simple little um, dark purplish uh, shadow. Um, I, I tend to like to use purple for a shadow color quite often. It's a, it's a great natural shadow color. Okay, so we're going to bring in another statue here, and this is being painted in right now in acrylic. As I move again, as I move up into that shadow region to closer to the temple, now that I've laid oil down, I'm going to move. I'm going to change that to oil, so you can see I'm kind of leaving a gap uh, that I can then work that in. And then I'm starting to bring in my jaguar. So this is uh, a jaguar that's kind of leaning up against the. Uh, the statue kind of scratching his paws and stretching a little bit just to add a little bit of interest and uh, variety here but I wanted to bring in a couple jungle cats that I thought might lend a, an interest uh, to the painting so as I'm working the top region of the uh, jaguar I've moved to oil now I've just mixed the same kind of color that purple orange color um, but now with my uh, oil palette so that um, I can complete his uh, his basic outline here uh, as well. And I'll do the same with the statue. As I start to move the statue up into that shadow region, um, I will use my oil palette now just to stay true to that rule that um, we, uh, we just want to make sure that uh, we're following that basic guideline on using oils and acrylics together to always lay oil on top of acrylic. Now I'm still using my oil palette now and I'm coming into the sunlit portion of the of the kind of mid foreground here and I'm stippling on uh, more texture. So I'm, I'm using liquid and I'm just using pure black, uh, kind of a midnight black um, oil paint and uh, stippling that on here. And then I can add some further uh, ruins uh, or some further um, debris of some of these uh, large bricks and stones uh, as well. This is all also done in, in, in oil. So from this point on I, I've more or less uh, switched over to my oil palette now uh, that I'm done I'm, uh, laying in the underpainting. Um, and so uh, everything from this point on as I demonstrate will be done in oil paint. So I'm stippling on some lighter highlights now I've, I've just gone to that gold color and added a little bit more titanium white a little bit more yellow and um, we'll be, continue to kind of step along different effects uh, going from lights and darks but this will sort of simulate that we've got um, rocks and stones uh, here we've got some um, you, you know earth uh, mud and clay and uh, and just making some interesting effects here. Now I'm going back over the Jaguar. I wanted to bring in more blues, kind of a, I've mixed more or less a, a, an orange blue. Now orange and blue are complement colors to each other. So as you bring in more orange and blue together, it sort of um, starts to gray out the, the, uh, the color, but I've gone more to the blue side of that orange color, but uh, I wanted to keep this cool because a lot of the uh, Jaguar is going to be facing away from the sunlight and um, we'll have more sort of silver lining. Um, so, uh, but I, as I have this wet, I wanted to continue to bring in some shadowing. So I've just kind of darkened um, that bluish color with a little bit, adding a little bit more black to that color and uh, as it's still wet I can uh, kind of work it into that wet bluish paint 
and uh, start to soften up um, some of those shadows and, and we can start to create the contour of the cat. And I'm going over the statue now with more of that uh, kind of dark purple gray color um, as well. And then um, making sure that I can sort of blend in the shadows on the statue. So I'm coming back with a small round um, brush here that uh, I can just start to bring in some some grasses and some mosses that are sort of forming around those flagstones and um, then I can stipple on top of that some uh, of a light green, uh, yellow green that, that I've mixed together. And uh, as we play into the sunlit region that's going to be a lot, uh, you know, a lot brighter and warmer and in, in those yellow greens. Uh, but as I move into the shadow, I'll kind of introduce a little bit more cooler colors with, with adding some purples and blues uh, to my greens to achieve that kind of uh, darker shadowed um, green effect. And then I can stipple on a little bit of texture here, like we've got some grasses and mosses that are sort of growing between the cracks uh, of these stones here and um, just kind of using a downward stroke I can kind of start to make it look a little bit more like grass as it comes toward the foreground. So we can start to bring in some of these um, fan leaf fronds um, and uh, you know I wanted to create a little separation between that background here and what we've got kind of going on here by the temple um, and, and just kind of form another another plane, another um, another value here, where it's a little bit closer. Um, and then thinking about, uh, you know, we're going to have some shadows and some light as as the sun's kind of hitting that. So I'm kind of going back and forth and just introducing that as well, using the uh, blue greens and the yellow greens. And this is where I've mixed here more of a blue-green. Um, and you can see how we have some contrast now. As so I jump between my yellow-greens and my blue-greens, I can start to form the illusion that we've got uh, some of those grasses getting sunlit and some of them staying in shadow. That'll just help with that illusion since we have the uh, shadow being cast from the temple or from that ruin. I don't know, maybe it's not a temple, maybe it's just a dwelling, but um, I'm calling it a temple ruin. I suppose that's fine. Um, but the old ruin, and um, I've had to jump forward a little bit. I, I added a little bit of shadowing uh, from those basic um, bushes and, and fronds uh, that are kind of striking into the sun region there, and I just I just glazed that on with some blue, uh, ultramarine blue, and some burnt umber mixed together, uh, keeping it transparent that way that all those that stippling will still show through. And then I can come back with my rigor brush and start to kind of add some additional individual uh, blades of grass and, and just make some interest here. I'm, I'm just kind of scumbling on a little bit of highlight uh, around the cracks in the ground and we can start to kind of lift off some ridges here and, and creating some further kind of interest and some texture just some ex extra things kind of happening now into the ground and and then I can kind of form some more cracks uh, in the ground that uh, you know may be typical in certain soils and clays that we may see this is uh, you know just to, to bring in some additional uh, detail so I'm sort of sort of working this uh, shadowed uh, foreground region I'll, I'll do more of that in the fourth and final uh, episode um, but I just wanted to bring that in just a little bit more into the foreground um, but we're not going to work too much of that foreground shadowing region quite now. And mo most of this painting is really going to be dedicated more toward uh, working on our jaguar and working on this foreground statue. Um, you know, these old jungle ruins, they, 
the um, those ancient inhabitants, you know, were, were artists and craftsmen and made some some beautiful uh, statues and and things. Um, so this is just one of those kind of statues of a head um, that can be, you know, a goddess or some sort of a deity or something um, that, uh, you know, maybe they worshipped it or something. I'm not really up to speed on um, the culture of back in those days, but um, having done research on jungle ruins, there's quite a few of these, and uh, that's kind of what we're simulating here. So I'm kind of painting in some shrubbery and some some bushes. Um, you know, this can be a, some vines that have started to kind of grow around uh, the statue. And, and again, just kind of jumping from light to dark here. And I'm making this paint really thick. As you can see, I've got it on my palette knife. Um, and I'm just kind of taking little globules of paint to form individual leafing. And then I can start to stipple on uh, some effect here. I'm using again liquid with uh, with our black and I can start to stipple on the the uh, texture. There's going to be a, a lot of uh, kind of porous um, kind of rocky texture to these statues and they're of course going to be very very aged and uh, this will assist in, in the um, Kind of the realism here on this statue so like i did on the ground i'm just bringing in some more kind of uh, bluish purplish gray a little bit lighter now that i've brought the the dark stippling i can bring in some lighter stippling and start to form some um, some contour some three dimension three dimensionality um, and and start to kind of work around the the contours of the face. We've got the nose, the eyes, the mouth. Um, and so by establishing this now, just using this tree and texture brush to create this texture and stippling, uh, I want to get that all kind of worked in first. And then um, I can come in with my rigor brush and begin to start to form some of the uh, designs that have been carved into this statue. Um, this this uh, image has um, a sort of crown that it's wearing here, so I, I'm kind of working in those designs um, and, and just kind of making uh, some some interesting little patterns here that I think can can kind of lend to the overall interest of our of our statue and, and just using those same kind of purple uh, blue um, tones that I've mixed here um, the same that I was using with with stippling on that um, but because this is going to be more in shadow I, I want to keep it cooler by kind of staying closer to those purple blues um, and then of course as I work into the lighter regions I can use kind of more of my gold colors, my oranges, yellows, um, and, uh, and white, and really start to uh, bring in some highlight. And so I'm lightly, I'm using my, my little uh, angle brush, but I can just kind of gently lay in a little bit more solid paint um, and, and brush strokes that are gently going over um, some of that stippling, but I don't want to lose the stippling. I want to keep a lot of that, so I'm keeping it, I'm just jumping around and I don't have a lot of paint on the brush um, and I'm just kind of laying it in, but these little angle brushes are really handy for getting both flat paint strokes and also very fine detailed um, pen prick style strokes as well, just based on the, uh, the type of brush that I'm using here. And so we can start to begin to add further detail, start to really form out the face now. Um, but look at, you know, watch the negative space here. You want a lot of this underpainting that we've already laid in to show through. Most of uh, this is going to be in shadow. So we don't need a lot of, 
additional detail and you don't want to kill off all that underpainting that you've worked so hard on that the whole process of stippling does take time and uh, we want a lot of that texture to show through it's really important that we show we've got this old weathered aged um, structure here this old statue and we don't want to lose that effect now I'm just drawing in now some um, separation into the face here um, as if this was kind of formed by using uh, different stones and blocks that were sort of brought together um, and uh, we can start to kind of carve out some some of this further detail now and i'm kind of trying to follow the the basic contour of the sh of the face as well so that it it still kind of sh makes it appear a little bit more three-dimensional and that there's some some shape and variety to this Now that we've laid in the statue for the most part, uh, I can start to now bring in the bushes and vines that uh, kind of surround the statue. So I wanted to get that all first figured out and now we can start to overlay uh, this le these leaves. Um, and I'm just using um, a small rigger brush. I, I, I think this is the number two rigger brush from a rosemary and company that I'm using uh, to kind of start to introduce that in and um, and kind of work around the face a little bit so that uh, it sort of seats the, the, the uh, statue a little bit more so it's not kind of floating out there in space and um, and then I can again kind of work between my my blue greens and my yellow greens and uh, start to form a little bit of uh, contrast. Um, I really wanted to have a lot of good contrast in this painting. We've got a lot of shadows and lights and we've got this small kind of sunlit path that's sort of filtering through the jungle and uh, kind of hitting into this region. So now we can work on our Jaguar and so kind of the same effect. I'm stippling on black with my liquid uh, More or less. It's kind of a 50 50 ratio uh, And you never want to have too much liquid in your paint because um, It's over time. It, it may not bind very well um, so um, Just I, I typically don't go beyond maybe a, a 50 50 or a 60 40 having a little bit more paint than liquid on the brush um, but um, you know just like we did with the statue and with the ground kind of jumping back and forth between my lights and darks I've got this orange uh, color that I've mixed together here orange gold um, use a little bit of sienna as well um, and just start to kind of work around where the uh, some of the light is striking our jungle cat and then as we go into the shadow region we're bringing in a little bit more blues so uh, I've mixed together more or less a, a blue gray more a bit more on the blue side but uh, using um, burnt umber and ultramarine blue and uh, titanium white and sort of just jumping back and forth here and and adding a little bit of texture and this will help with the illusion of some fur um, and so now that we've got that sort of laid in and figured out I can start to use my small round brush and start to lay in uh, a little bit more detail with the ears and the eyes the mouth um, the nose and um, I can start to begin to form a little bit more fur here so I'm just having small little brush marks um, a little bit of lining um, to start to give that illusion that we've got a little bit of fur kind of happening here but for the most part I'll be using that stippled effect that'll still help to give the illusion of fur as well we've got some longer hairs kind of around the face and kind of around the jawbone um, and um, you know I can play kind of using um, 
a little bit of a lighter version of that blue gray and we can bring in the whiskers um, but you know this is small detail work I've switched over to my rigor brush so I can get those kind of those finer lines here and then I don't need to cover the entire cat with with additional little fur strokes but I'll just kind of hit certain regions where I think the fur is going to be just a little bit longer or maybe it's kind of it's kind of springing out a little bit in certain areas because the back is a little bit bent here so it's going to cause the shoulder blades to sort of splay out a little bit more fur and then I can kind of introduce a little bit more um, of our of our dark shadows uh, here now I want to kind of get some of those darker pockets of shadows kind of worked in you know around the the back and and um, sort of are in those little areas that are facing furthest away from the sunlight once we have this all kind of laid in at the very end I'll lay in a, a little bit of a glaze um, as well just to get some further shadow uh, the glaze that I eventually will get to use will be uh, ultramarine blue and di dioxazine purple and a little bit of, of uh, burnt umber uh, with some liquid and that'll help me to achieve deeper richer shadowing and I'll also come back with the glaze and add some some umber some burnt umber uh, as well uh, with that liquid so that I can get in a little bit of that orangey color I think I actually did mix umber and orange together uh, so that we can kind of have that orangish colored effect um, for our cat. And I can stipple on a little bit more color because I again I, I, I want to use that stipple effect to help simulate some fur, give some variety and some texture to our to our cat here. So it's just a matter of kind of jumping back and forth, lights and darks, we can start to form shadows. We also have a lot of reflected shadow, and that's why I'm kind of bringing in more of those blue blue tones, um, sort of facing away from the sun, but still highlighting a little bit. We're going to get all this kind of worked in here. Now I can bring in uh, all the spotted patterns on our Jaguar um, and so this will kind of you know there, there's a specific structure and pattern you want to follow the contours of the neck and the shoulder blades and, and that'll help to really um, you know bring in some three-dimensionality here uh, to our cat as well and once I have all this laid in I can let it I can let it dry and then I can bring in my final glazes uh, but you want to make sure everything's dry uh, before you bring those final glazes in. So I gave it a day to dry since I'm using my my Alcad oil paints and then I can bring in those final glazes. With these final little spots here and we'll be done with our cat here pretty soon after we we get our final glazes in All right then, so we've uh, completed our third installment of our Jungle Ruins video. Wanted to make sure that we got this sort of foreground uh, kind of put in here. It's more of a middle foreground. Um, definitely get the Jaguar and our statue here were kind of my goals. And so glad we got that taken care of. The next time we meet, 
for our fourth and final episode of our Jungle Ruins painting, we're going to work on the main foreground. So we've got our tree here, um, got a bunch of jungle uh, shrubbery, and we're going to work on this shadowy section here. I've got another jaguar that's going to be reclining here in the ground. Um, so I, I may or may not show that. Uh, since we did uh, spend time working on the Jaguar that's more in the light. Um, but we'll figure it out as we get going. So looking forward to this uh, final episode. Hope you can tune in for that as well. And uh, if you've not done so, please subscribe. Please click your likes. Click uh, your alerts. Please provide comments. And until next time, thank you.